Good evening. Thank you for joining us again for another broadcast from the Anointed Makazi. I'm sure as you have been following the different episodes that your life has been blessed and tonight is no different. Tonight's message was recorded in 2002 at the Kalegana Cathedral in Accra, Ghana and the message is entitled Shema. Shema is a Hebrew word that means to listen intelligently. Throughout the word of God, the word disobedience is many times mentioned in relation to obeying and hearing. As Christians, we sometimes do not hear the word of God or hear the voice of God correctly, and that makes us miss the plan and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So tonight's message is geared up to make us listen intelligently and learn how to do so, so that we are able to follow the will and the plan of God as he speaks. Be blessed as you watch this message. Oh, yes, not the more. 
Landed. Put your hands together for them one more time. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Well, we are glad to be in church again Tuesday evening. Hallelujah. And we are happy for what happens every Tuesday. Above all, only good things will happen to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm glad to announce you that we have in the house a, a teacher, a pastor, a convention speaker, a founder, but the best of all, a father in the house. Let's stand and welcome our dear father to speak to his children. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this evening for an opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence to receive your holy word, to dine at your table, to feast in your presence. And Lord, we ask that you would guide us, and speak to our hearts, and let your will be done. Give us open eyes, Lord, open ears, that we may receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn with me, please, to John chapter 12. Tonight, I want to share with you a very important uh, message. Amen. Amen. And I believe that it will bless you and it will be very, very important for our lives. Amen. 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 Hello. Hi. Are we happy? Yes. Good. The title of my message is Shama. S <laughs> H A M A. It is a Hebrew word. S H A M A. It's a Hebrew word. It is often translated obey. Obedience. Believe. Obey. But it has a very interesting original meaning, which I think is the reason uh, for, what do you call it, much of our being outside of the will of God. Now, we can never do enough to impress God. Amen. It just won't work. Amen. Amen. We can never be holy enough. It just won't work. That is why we are often surprised when the Lord uses certain people who have sins that we know about. We are surprised. But you see, the Bible says that whoever looks upon a woman to last after her in his heart has already committed. Um, Jesus said that. Now, when you take Jesus' words seriously, your perspective of life really changes. Amen. And Jesus said that is fornication, not physically taking off your trousers or your skirt and your pants or your panties and lying on each other and jumping up and down. That is not necessarily, that is not necessarily fornication or adultery. Adultery according to Jesus. Are you listening to me? <laughs> I don't know why you are disturbed. <laughs> Well, when you are preaching, say it the way you want to say it. I know how. 
I want to say it, okay? So when it's your turn, then you preach it the way you, you want to preach it. Easy. That is not what Jesus defines as fornication or adultery. That's what you define as fornication or adultery. That's what you define as fornication. Jesus defines fornication and adultery as looking at somebody with desire. He didn't say whosoever looks on a woman and imagines the thing I just said <laughs> has committed adultery. He said that who looks after her to last after her and last means desire. The English dictionary says an animal desire for sexual indulgence. That's what the, the word last is defined as, a desire. So almost all of us here, if, in fact all of us, are fornicators and adulterers. If you are not, stand up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Some of you, when I'm preaching, you are looking at me and fornicating in your minds. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop preaching, you see. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. You cannot impress God. You can try a thousand times. You'll be far from the mark. We have all eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We all have some good and some evil. And you may, you may never take an, a knife or a sword and kill somebody. But the Bible says, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Is a murderer. There are many murderers here. Plenty. How many of us have hated people? Give me a wave of honesty. The whole church is full of murderers. You said, oh, but I, I'm, I'm far from, you know, the kind of sin that takes you to hell. You know, pastor, there are certain petty things that I do, but, you know, real major sins are not my cup of tea. I'm, I'm quite aside from major sins. Really? The Bible says, whosoever says to his brother, fool, or raka, which is some kind of rebuke, sharp word, is in danger of hellfire. Already in danger. Although you haven't committed what you are calling a major sin, Jesus is talking about major sins which can take you to hell. Looking at your brother and saying, raka, which means an unworthy fellow. Stupid, nonsense, idiot, swine. You're, you're already booked for hell. Booked. Not your definition. You are not God. Jesus is God. He told us. He made heaven and hell. He is giving the rules. He is giving the, the standards. So you make your own standard, you'll be surprised. When you are doing O-level physics... You can make your own marking scheme and your own syllabus. It doesn't matter. When the exam comes, sit down and use your, right at the end of your exam that I used my own personal standard. In my standard, I don't learn light. I don't learn nuclear physics. I don't learn whatever. They will just look at you and say, no, nonsense. The person is insane. Don't wait to get to heaven before the ruler is used on you. The ruler is in the word. So, brothers and sisters, none of us can make it by doing anything in particular. Planting a million churches is not what really impresses God. The Bible has told us what will make God happy. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. In fact, our salvation starts by not by doing anything good but by becoming a believer 
For by faith are we saved through grace. And that not of yourself, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2.8. You are saved by faith. Somebody said, Jesus, how can we work your works? And Jesus said, believe. Believe. Believe on him whom the Father has sent. Believe. That's how to do any... When it comes to God, <laughs> to do anything with God, if you want to go anywhere with God, it's going to be by starting... The first point is going to be with believing. Second step will be believing. And all the way to the end, it will be through belief. I'm going to be preaching to you a new message called, I am not afraid of Pharaoh. Yeah. I am not afraid of Pharaoh. Because the Bible says... Moses, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the king. He was not afraid of Pharaoh. And he endured, he means he survived, as seeing that which is invisible. He was seeing invisible things. Faith is the evidence of things we are not seeing. Heaven, rewards, future, eternity, thrones, crowns, things we... Things we cannot see. We are having evidence of them in our heart. That is what is driving us. He endured. He survived. As seen that which was invisible. That's faith. Today's message of faith, including my message, is often the grasping of things by people who are still earthly minded. Car, house, clothes, shoes, money, Grasping, that's what we call faith. Read your Bible carefully, and you'll see the faith people. And they were not having the standards we are having. Many of them were some way by our ruler, but by his ruler. Rahab was great before God. Rahab, she was a beautiful daughter before the Lord because she believed when the Israelites would come, she believed in the God of the Israelites. Abraham believed. Isaac believed. Jacob believed. Joseph believed. By faith, when he died, he gave, he gave commandment concerning his bones. That was his faith. But I know one day the Lord will come and deliver you. And he gave instructions about his bones. Carry my bones with you when you are going. That's faith. Faith is seen. You are sitting here, but you are seeing yourself in heaven. You are seeing yourself on thrones. You are seeing yourself. You are seeing things not seen. That's faith. And I want to tell you something that everything we're ever going to do with God and in God is never going to be about being good. I just want to get that into your, your mind. Because when I really look at Jesus' definition of goodness, I mean, we all fall short every day. So the one thing we can do there's only one thing we can do. Preach. Believe. Okay. How can we do the work? Jesus said believe. Remember that scripture in John 14? I love that scripture. He said that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. Not he that is uh, prayerful, good, holy, spiritual. But he that believeth on me. Many of you don't believe. That is why there is nothing to show for your lives. If you believe, your actions will change. Your life will change. Your decisions will change. Your moves that you are making will change. As soon as you believe, then you begin to enter the works of God. As I stand here now, by the grace of God, God has used me to start many, many churches all over the world, which are working and are thriving. But as I stand here up till today, I still have not yet seen Jesus personally to commission me on any venture or any adventure or any move or any commission. I still haven't. I'm still waiting. I still haven't. I'm still going by my belief. I'm enduring. I'm seeing that which is invisible. The things I see that are guiding me, the invis- I see heaven. I tell you, I see eternity. I see myself walking the street. That is more real to me now than some of you people here. I see myself walking the streets of God. I see myself sitting there looking back and seeing if I could have done anything different from how I was doing it now. I wish that the day that I would die, I would not have anything. That I would be like Jesus so that when I die, there's nothing to inherit. 
just the man going. We are finished with here. My life, his Bible says, our life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ shall appear, then our life shall. Is that the time that we are actually going to start for me? Maybe you are blowing time here, but me, my life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ shall appear, that's when some of us are also going to emerge and start living life. Maybe you are living your life now, so have a good time. But I'm seeing my eyes are there. My eyes are not on this earth's gold. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain everything and lose his soul? So, today I, I'm just starting this as an introduction to really help you to see that you cannot impress God. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I'm not saying you shouldn't try, but I don't care who you are. You are still not making it. None of us here is, has made it. We haven't made it. Read your Bible carefully. I just gave you some two, three examples. And you realize that everybody raised up his hand as a murderer. Today, everybody has confessed he's a murderer in the church. And fornicator asked, if you are not a fornicator, stand up. And nobody was able to stand up. So the whole church are daughters and murderers. These are the two combinations that we have here. So what can bring us into his presence? His, by faith. By faith are we saved. By faith we are just. The Bible says we are justified by faith. There are some people, they really feel, you know, because they, the way they behave, when they, you know, they walk around, they really look dignified and they're very orderly, you know, and, you know, when you see them, they don't look like they are even real. Do you, you, you have such people in, there are some ladies like that, when they, as if they don't even, their feet cannot touch the floor, as if they can't kill mosquito. When mosquito comes, they can't kill it. They'll say, oh, stop what you are doing. I don't like that. You know? And there are some brothers like that. They look very, you know, Caesar. Sometimes such people, when they marry, they are very surprised. Because, you see, they think they are good. But when you marry, your husband or your wife will point out to you that you are not good. <laughs> Any married person here will tell you what I'm saying is true. They will show you line after line. Okay, Charlie, you have not qualified at all. So there's one thing that we can do. I'm sharing with you about it. Just one word. It's called Shama. I've not yet interpreted that word for you. Shama. Everybody say Shama. Shama. Now, Shama is a Hebrew word and it means... To hear intelligently. Actually, people who are disobedient do not hear. Or they do not hear intelligently. Most of the words which are used to, to which, are, which are interpreted or translated disobey, disobedience, disobey, are often to do with hearing, like not hearing, refusing to hear. Not hearing intelligently. Often, and in the English language, they just write disobey. He disobeyed. He disobeyed. Or children of disobedience. But often it is to do with hearing. Not hearing. Hearing amiss. Not hearing properly. Refusing to hear. Or not hearing intelligently. And this particular word I'm talking about is the word shama. And it means to hear intelligently. And today God is calling us here. To hear him intelligently. To hear his word. Because you can hear. Like Jesus said. Hear, like hearing they may hear. But he also described. Well, like in hearing they did not hear. And seeing they did not see. For their eyes were dull. Heavy. Their ears were dull. Closed. Their eyes have closed. They can't see. They can't hear. And Jesus is calling us. To hear him. And to hear him intelligently. To save our own selves. Brothers and sisters, almost everything that is important for God to tell you, to save your life, to protect you, to make you prosperous, to bless you, he has said to you. Did you hear it? Did you hear it intelligently? Were you hearing? Could you hear him? When you were hearing, did you hear? Did you hear it very well? 
or did you hear it and it just passed you did not apply some thinking and some intelligence to what you were hearing so that it became at the end as though you were somebody who did not hear there are times i remember when i was in um, buenos aires i think it was yes we were driving and we were going to the airport as we were driving they were on strike because their money uh was in crisis they didn't they don't have money their their whole uh money was being devalued and there were so many problems and people were just coming together at various junctions in the road and just joining their car and parking their cars at intersections to block the traffic as they were riding they had closed the banks nobody can take money nothing you can't do anything just to stop and to prevent the system from going on and as we would drive some people would give us a signal because they were taking me to the airport from argentina they were taking me to the airport to come. they would signal here don't go there they blocked that plane. when you get there you say ah, i'm going to the airport they can route in their country but i'm catching a plane to go out so if i follow you in your routing you have blocked roads and you nobody can go if i follow you i will be hot because right. i will not get my plane yeah. so as we were passing by you see that some people will be signaled that don't go others will be signaled don't go and still they'll go and others will be signaled don't go and then they will make a change one time they signaled us and we turned around and went to another place so you realize that people can hear some people can hear intelligently as i'm preaching to you about heaven and hell and about the word of god hear and hear well personally jesus often didn't care whether people heard or they didn't hear at one time he said whosoever rejecteth me and receiveth not my words i shall not judge him but my father shall judge him and then he just continued his, his preaching i will not judge him my father said i because i did not come to judge the world i've just come to say what i say whoever rejected me and rejected my word i did not come to judge him god will judge him so he didn't really seem to care one time he was speaking to the people and then they were annoyed and he said relax relax <laughs> he said any tree that my father has not planted cannot be planted so it's like don't get annoyed if you can you are not included you are not included so the annoyance that you are displaying is because you are not included so just don't even get bored you are not inside to hear intelligently is so important because sometimes god is loving us with continuous words upon words upon words of direction of ministry how many in church you've heard me preaching you thought i was talking to you R raise up your hand raise up your hand you thought i was talking to you yeah why would you feel that i'm talking to you because the holy spirit is talking to you you feel many times you are in church you feel that god is really speaking to you it's not me I'm, i don't have you in my mind i mean how many people can i have and how many people's names do i know God has you in his mind. And my duty is to me. That's why Jesus, before he went, he called Peter and said, feed my lambs. Feed my gentle little lamb. Talk to them. Tell them the thing. And Jesus said, my spirit will remind you of things that I have said. So feed my lambs. Feed my lamb. Keep on feeding them. Keep on ministering to them. And he let them hear. And now God is calling us to hear intelligently. Shama. Otherwise, a whole lot of things will happen to us as if we never had and I'm telling you one of the ways you can impress God is, is to hear and to believe Jesus look in Deuteronomy says that and if you shall hack in and obey that word is that if you shall hack in and obey hack in and obey that is the thing that you can do because you can't impress him with your holiness you're already down you can't impress him with your so-called righteousness. You can't impress him with whatever. You can't impress him with any. You can impress him with your beliefs. By believing, you suddenly enter a realm. You enter a realm. Bible says, for by faith, the elders obtain a good report. I am obtaining a good report by my belief and my obeying him, not by starting a church. Not by having prayed. I am not better than anybody. But where I can make myself different from anybody is by what I believe. And the extent to which I can hear and the extent to which I can, that is where I can make a difference between me and somebody. 
And that's the way you can make a difference between you and the person sitting by you. It's not by not doing this and not doing that or stopping what you used to do or not doing that or not. It's by hearing intelligently and beginning to believe. You people, a lot of you don't believe in in eternity. You believe in earth. Your life is oriented towards this earth. Your whole life is your time, your energy, your money, your effort, and your sacrifice is oriented towards this earth. We can go to school until you are 42 years old. Sometimes I see people, I say, ah, why don't you finish going to school? And it's like we are going to school, going, 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 more school. All the school can do for you is to help you on this earth. And you see people making sacrifice upon sacrifice upon sacrifice for their life to go to school to further and improve their life on this earth when it comes to sacrifice to make for heaven. There's nothing to, t- I mean, they, they'll start talking to you about things. They'll start bringing up issues. But when it comes to earth, earthly oriented thing, that's why I say a lot of the faith men, even with the pastors, these days I get scared when I'm, I say I'm a pastor. Because the way Jesus talked to pastors, eh, it was very frightening. The way he spoke to the pastors, the pastors of those days were called Pharisees and Sadducees and, 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 and rabbis. And the way he spoke to them, and said, you snakes, you serpents, blind pastors, blind. You are leading people into blindness, into darkness and into ditches. Blind pastors. He was so angry and so hurt with the pastors because they were leading, by their preaching and their talking, they were leading a whole lot of people astray because the people believed in them. He blasted them. He said, you love greetings. You love to sit in the front places. You love to, for people to call you rabbi, rabbi, pastor. That's all you like. Blind pastors, snakes, serpents, tombs, whitewashed graves. When you hear Jesus speaking to the pastors, you begin to get frightened for pastors because we are leading people often astray because people believe in what we are saying. And as we lead people to, 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 to become earthly minded and oriented just towards this earth, when this earth has nothing for us to hold, and this earth has, it's, it's before us, day after day, we see people vacating this earth and going, and we know that we ourselves are going, and we know that it's a matter of time, and we know that earthly life is just a few years, but eternity is millions of years, and yet all our investment, all our sacrifice, all our time, all our life is this, is, 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 is given for this earth and for things on this earth. My God. My God. God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. As our life, we say, it's that God speaks to us and we cannot hear. There's only one thing that you can do. I'm telling you, and that is to hear him and to obey and to hearken to his voice and to listen to him and to follow him. You can't be good enough. I can't be good enough. I'm not good enough. No one is good enough. His blood is what makes us acceptable and under any circumstance. That verse, that thing that we say by his grace, it's not a jargon. It's not a Christian jargon. It's not some cliche. It's not some kind of funny, nice rhyming word. It's the fact of the matter that by his grace and by his grace alone, we stand. If it were not for his grace, we are nowhere and we will be nowhere. It's time to believe. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. No wonder, no wonder there's nothing to show for our Christianity. We are like some few philosophers who have some nice ideas. We are just like another group, differentiate us from Hindus and Buddhists and whatnot. And we believe in this and they believe in that. And and there's no power, there's no signs and wonders. One of the scriptures that I have used to guide my life all along is that verse, he, who, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And I ask myself, have I done, am I doing anything that Jesus did? Ask yourself, ask yourself, do you do anything that Jesus did? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do. And greater works. When I see the greater works, I often close my eyes and say, Lord, please don't start on the greater works. Let's just do talk about the works. Let's just look at the works Jesus did. Let's not concern ourselves with the greater works. The works that I do, shall you do also. Hear intelligently from today. Hear well. Now, I want you to look at verse 21 of John 13.
Verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Now verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, one of you shall betray me. Now look at chapter 13, verse 2, verse 1 and 2. Chapter, the same chapter 13. I just want you to see the context. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart. I told you when I was preaching about Pharaoh that, um, uh, what do you call it? Jesus was the lamb. He was taken to Jerusalem and examined, like the lambs are taken in five days before, and examined very well before that he was really spotless without flaw. And then he was sacrificed at the same time that they were killing the little, little lambs all over Jerusalem and among the Jews. That's the same time Jesus Christ was being crucified. Because he was, the, he was the perfect fulfillment of all prophecy. He was sacrificed at the same time as the Passover lamb. And he is the one who made the way for us to escape from Egypt, from Pharaoh, and all the wickedness of this world. Hallelujah. And now Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Verses 2. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And Jesus, knowing that, that the Father had given him all things into his hand, that he was come from God and went to God. Verse 4, he riseth from supper. Huh? Are you there? He riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel and gathered himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was gathered. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter saith unto him, Lord, thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And verse 9. And Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. But not all. Circle this word. You see, I want you to see the word Shama means to hear intelligently. Now you will see that Jesus Christ on that evening tried hard to speak to Judas. But he never heard it. You know, sometimes when somebody is going to destroy himself, you can even say it clearly. It seems they cannot hear and sometimes we come to the church and God speaks to us over and over and over and over. It's as if we cannot hear. This is the first remark that Jesus made at that supper table. He said, you are clean, but not all of you are clean. Somebody there who has planned to betray Jesus Christ should have picked a certain clue from that message that, hey, something is even being known about what I'm doing. Listen to me. As you hear God speaking to you time and again, Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday after Tuesday, you must begin to get a clue that God knows something about you and that he's perhaps trying to pass some comment or some idea or trying to influence you. Somehow he's trying to reach you one way or another. You should try to catch it by now. Right? By, but not all. Right number one. Shama number one. He did not hear that one. You are clean, but not all. Why? Verse 11. He gives us exactly what he meant. For he knew who should betray him. But therefore he said, therefore said he, you are not all clean. This is what he was saying. He knew that somebody was there who was going to betray. That is the reason why he said, you are clean, but not all are clean. Judas should have picked some symptom or some signal from this thing. Why? Tell somebody, I hope you are picking some signals from the message by now. Don't think about Judas. Think about yourself. 
Jesus told the, the people who were crucified, he said, you will say that if you were the prophet, you would not have crucified me. But you are the same as them. You are the worst of them. You have crucified all of them. And I'm just, you, you are just doing exactly the same thing. But you are saying in yourself that if you were in those days, you would not have crucified Isaiah and Jeremiah and all these guys. And we also sit in our time and say, if we were in Jesus' time, we wouldn't have done that. Verse 12. So after he had washed their feet, including Judas's feet, and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord. And you say, Well, for so I am. There are times you have to say what you are clearly. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Jesus is establishing a principle and a standard here. That the one who sends you is greater than the one who is being sent. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But, <laughs> look, there is, listen to the message that is coming. I say, Shama me to hear intelligently. He said, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. No, I mean, how more direct can the thing be? Oko, how more direct can this thing be? You finished eating bread. Sometimes you ask yourself, how more direct can the thing be? What do you want them to say? Do you want them to mention your name? Do you want them to call out your name and make you stand out and speak to you among the twelve? You want them to say, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. I'm speaking to you. The scripture is being fulfilled in your life. Is that what you want? You are clean, but not all of you are clean. How many times that God had to write day and night to speak to us, to talk to us, to minister to our hearts, and we are just walking as if we've never heard when God speaks to us about different issues in our lives. Now he's brought some ancient scriptures and said that, and I mean, look at that. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel. His heel. Here. That's what it means. Bruce Lee. <laughs> and you are sitting there and you are only 12. <laughs> I said, You are sitting there and you are only 12. You can't see it. Hearing intelligently. Hearing intelligently. You can't see it too. I'm preaching, I mentioned pastors. And you are pastors here. You can't hear, you can't see that it's you. <laughs> he that eateth bread with me, this is Shaman number two, has lifted up his heel against me. Now notice verse 19. Eesh, more frightening. Now I tell you before it come, so that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. And I, you notice that the message is being mixed up with other Mulliganos messages so that it's so as to lighten the heart of God. If Jesus had gone strong, he would have picked up Judas and given him a lot of fear, but he just mixed it up with he that has received me, received you these other messages. And that's how God's word is mixed. That's why when you read Isaiah, you see that the word is mixed with so many things, but the word is still there. When Jesus had that said, he was troubled in spirit and testified. Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you, one of you, one of you shall betray me. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Number three. I can preach about loyalty 10,000 times. The examples will be given. The, what? The, 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 the illustrations will be given. 
It will be said in over. I will say it. Pastor Eddie will say it. Reverend Saki will say it. It will be preached by different people in different, different examples. And yet, and yet, we are here. And you will see that in some years to come, some of us will rise up to betray us. It is an, it's a wonderful thing to hear intelligently. I think one of the ways to hear intelligently is to, I think one of, for me, you know, listen on, listen to this, listen to this may help you. I think one of the ways to hear intelligently is to always assume that you are the bad thing completely. That's what I believe. If, for instance, I'm talking, like I was talking to a brother and I was telling him, it seems you are offended. I was telling him, I feel you are offended. He was a pastor. I said, I feel you are offended. You are offended by these people. And then he was like, are you sure? You know, because there's a... Then when he got to a I said, brother, look, you will never be healed until you assume 100% that that is the case. That is when you can come out of it. But if you say, well, there may be an element of what you are talking about. You will never get free of it. But when you assume that I am, I am proud, suddenly you can be healed of pride. But when you say, well, there may be some elements of pride in my life and so on. I mean, God is working on it and I believe that God is well. But when you, st- and we are all proud, you, see, you just generalize the whole thing. But when you get up and say that me, I have a problem with pride. And God, I bow my knees and I say, Lord, I've realized that I'm proud. Help me to be free from pride. Then suddenly you begin, until you take fully. Because probably Judas was here. That's why I said that not hearing well or hearing amiss. It's like you are hearing and always assuming it's, it's for all of us. One of you shall be. What do you think it meant? We are 12. The thing has become more. He said that the scripture is being fulfilled that he that eateth bread with me. Who is eating bread? We are eating bread. Then it's like we didn't hear that. And Jesus, Jesus, look, I love that scripture. The first verse in John 13, he said that, and Jesus was with them and he loved them to the end. Jesus really loved Judas. Jesus chose him to be his treasurer. He chose him to be his accountant. He chose him to be with him. He was somebody he really loved. He really cared about him. And he chose him to be close to him. He really cared about him. And he said, come and be with me. And Jesus knew what was in hell. Jesus has seen hell before. And he was trying hard to save this man. And he was saying the thing, like, you didn't hear the first one, uh, you are clean, but not all. That one is like, if you are not deep, you can't catch it. Then he said, if you eat bread, you that eat bread with me will lift up his heel. That one is like eating bread with me. But we are eating bread, so maybe it's not this bread, another bread. Maybe the bread we, we were eating with the multitudes when he shared the bread. So it's like that one too has passed our miss. Then he says that now one of you. That one too, you can't hear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Meanwhile, you have come to see the Pharisees and these people already, the high priests. Shaman wasn't working. Let's read on. I'm, I've almost finished. Those of you who want to go home, you are not hearing well, that's why. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. This was John, very young guy, very close to Jesus. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, said, hey, come, small boy, come here. One small boy, and John came. That he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. See, if you have children, sometimes they will send one. Say, go and ask daddy this. Or they will say, ask mommy to ask daddy. So they called John and they said, John, ask him. Ask him. Then he lying on Jesus' breast. Jesus saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Now this is also a sign of Jesus' love. Jesus had not had a meeting with his disciples and told them that, look, I want to tell you of a plan. One of us, Judas, I've seen him in the, in the spirit. He has gone to betray me at the high priest's house. I saw him yesterday. He has not had any meeting. Nobody had an idea. Everybody thought everybody was good. Jesus was still trying to protect Judas. 
So nobody knew, nobody could imagine that it was Judas. I mean, how Judas? How? How? I mean, how Judas? Who? who, who? I mean, say, is it Peter? Is it the who? We can't see any signs. Only Jesus knew. And he was protecting Judas by not saying it. There are times that I've had people who have been so rebellious. And all too, I've never said anything about them. Because I was trying to protect them. Then when trouble came, then it was like, i rather, because I haven't said anything, it's like, why, you, why, why is that a nice person? We've known him all along. and Why are you treating him like that? And you see him as a nice person because nothing has ever been said negative about the person for his own sake to help him. Then he lying on Jesus, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. This is another terrible thing. It's like uh, soaking, Gary, and then, what do you call it? Oh, uh, Kenke and Shito, or isn't it, or stew? Okay, so a sop is like, it's like you take like, like bread or something. So they take it, yeah, then you put it in and you take some of the stew and then you, 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 you eat it. Okay, so Jesus said, the one, I'm, and it was something that was done. So I'm going to take, and it was something that was done to show love. So I'm going to take it. So look at this, are my 12 disciples here. And I'm sitting here and I take it. <laughs> Jesus, have some more. Are you okay? Then Jesus continued eating her. Then John was sitting there and said, hey, Judas, I can't believe it. Read on. Hear intelligently. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. After the sop, Satan entered into him more entering. Then the last summer, Jesus said, that thou doest, do quickly. Now they are actually sending you to go and call people to come and arrest. Are you not afraid? Are you not afraid? Now they have sent the thing into sending. When your father says, go. When your father says, ah, whatever you want to do, do. You must be afraid. Now they are sending you to your own doom. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought that Judas had the bag, and Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sword, went out immediately, and it was night. Now notice verse 31. Now when he was gone out, look at what Jesus said. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. When you start to become an orangu, a rebel, somebody who fights against authorities that God has set and rebel and be disloyal, God uses you to glorify his name. All the attacks that I have received, they are all for the glory of God. God has made things better. At least he has made me to a better person. By me, if I have never experienced certain things, I will never know. And all of you must know when the Judas in your life and the beast in your life starts to manifest against you, lift up your hand and say, now is the son of man glorified. That's what, you must begin, you, that's what you must begin to say. When you start to go through difficulties, lift up your hand and say, now is the son. Life is not simple, though. Life is not. When the things begin to happen to you, begin to say, now is the daughter of Christ glorified. Through the difficulties, I shall be glorified. Hallelujah. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself. Amen. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. Okay? Love. Jesus, Jesus was saying, I love Judas. I loved all of you, including Judas, to the very end. 
Look at what he did to me. It's not easy to love somebody who does not love you back. How many know that it's very difficult to love somebody that does not love you back? You love the person and the person returns your love with what? Hatred, betrayal, suspicion, accusations. It's very difficult. When we build a toilet, then they say we are building a toilet for ourselves. Then we say we are doing this for that. Then we say we are taking their land. We are doing this. It's not easy to love somebody who returns your love with suspicion and accusations. It's difficult. You just withdraw. But Jesus continued. Even when Judas was doing, he said, you know, so that nobody could say he didn't tell him. He said it and said it and said it and said it to the last point where he was actually sending him. Go to your own distraction now. And Judas said, yes, sir. I'll see you. And then he went. Singing in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And he went out there and it was night. Satan ate death. There are some people when you advise them, they become wilder. I said there are some people when you send them, they become wilder. It's not easy, but Jesus was saying love. And so I believe husbands, if you, you must love your wife even if she does not love you. It's not easy to love a wife who does not love you. It's not easy for a wife to love a husband who does not love her. You love, you pour your love. There are a lot of women like that, or some women like that. They will pour out their love to their husband, and their husband will give their love to another, another, another person. But Jesus, Jesus, Judas gave his love to the Pharisees and to money, even though Jesus loved, the Bible says Jesus loved him to the end. And that's why he summarizes this is a new commandment I'm giving you that you love one another. Oh, yeah. And to love somebody who will return your love by saying you do not love me. You love another. You care about another. You don't really love me. If you have a child and you tell the child I love you and the child says you don't love me. I know you don't love me. I don't. Stepchildren often it's like that. You may pour out your love on this child, but the child. The child does not believe. Because it's my stepmother. I know a lot of stepchildren like that. They've been loved by their stepmother, but they can't believe that it's love. So they return the love with suspicion. Even the genuine love, the visits, the care, the, 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 the love that was poured on them, they don't see it as love. They say, oh, you love your children. Till I die, I will never believe anything else. You love your children, you don't love me. But Jesus continued, even though Judas did not believe in him. Judas did not believe in him. That's why he was behaving the way. He did not love him, Jesus. But Jesus loved him. And, said, and even when he, kept, he went so far, so far, to try to help the man who did not believe in him and did not love him. And that's why at the end of this, I'm giving you a new commandment that you be loved. And I believe that is the greatest command. To be able to love what is not lovable. And what responds to your love with something else. Can you walk in love? That's the new commandment. Can you be in love? Can you walk in love? Can you walk by love? Can you love? Our lives are often lives without love. No patience. No kindness. No love. Love for what does not love you. That's what I'm talking about. Greater love has no man than this that a man should lay down. That's, what, that's the love I'm talking about. It's easy to love something that is nice and something that retains your love. Well, that is why people easily have sex. They make an advance, this one responds. I make an advance, this one responds. I make a, before you realize, we are together. That one is easy. But where it becomes a chronic thing that you are now giving love and then the person, is, his eye is somewhere else. I love you. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> Hello, I'll be, I'll be back soon. All right. Uh -huh. You say what? You love me. Oh, me too. I love you. I love you too. It's not real. And you continue to. That's what brings the heartbreaks. And that's why Jesus poured his love to Judas. You are not Judas, but he poured his love. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he get for it? Betrayal. I don't love you. I don't believe you are the son of God. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, you know, all those people you raised from there, they were sleeping. They were, not, they were not dead. 
I don't really believe. To love that which returns doubt and suspicion, hatred and accusation. It's not easy, but it's possible. Jesus did it, and so we can all do it. That is why we love the people in Kolegono. That's why we gave them televisions, and we are going to do more things for them, because we love them. Somebody came and said, somebody came, when I, they said, you are a real Christian. I said, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. We are supposed to be Christians. What else are we? <laughs> By this shall all men know that you are my disciple, when you have not faith, love. Amen. Amen. Hear intelligently. No, if you are here tonight, hear and hear God. Because a time comes when a hearing, you've heard, uh, you didn't hear well. You didn't hear well. And you will go out and it will be night. After hearing even direct messages, Pastor Fabian, direct messages, it was night and you're still going. (laughs) Hear and hear intelligently. Father, thank you for your word tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your great blessing, Lord. Thank you for your word. The word of God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Please stand to your feet in a moment as we close. Lift up your hands to the Lord and just ask the Lord to just open your ears, open your heart, open your eyes, open your spirit. Mando Santala Maraba Shimberelete Semburam Barambalada Paralasto Paralande Shibere Deste Melaramba Balada Fastarambara Levikis Toromogis in Pereleve de Lico Provalade Handele Regaste Perelino Moshe Hashindo Lomo Cabarada Bracasalaba Oh, just pray for yourself in a moment. Just say, Lord, what am I not hearing? Lord, ask the Lord, what am I not hearing? What is this? What is this, Lord? What is this to me? Now, what is this to the whole child? What is this to me, Lord? What am I not hearing? May I hear, Lord, intelligently, Lord. Mando samparala cabarale, frastambro sembrache talabre, perigol mozum provile. Mando sembre, sembre, sembre. Rala la mamanda la la babanda la vedere la vedere. Bacico lo mo samparala ma de prelegge con le mamma. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am the Lord that He loved thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I said my word and I heal your disease. I you are the Lord, you are the Lord, you are the Lord, and He that you are the Lord, my. be seated. John chapter 13 verse 36. The Lord wants me to finish something here. Just share that with you. And Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered, whither I go, thou canst not follow me now. But thou shalt follow me afterwards. Everybody say afterwards. Ask the person after what? After what? Afterwards, after what? What is going to happen before I will follow you? What did Jesus say to Peter? Where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. And he went on and said, but you can follow me afterwards. Afterwards. 
after what? Write it down in somewhere. What will happen before I will follow? What will happen in my life before I will follow? What will happen before I will follow? Or what must happen before I will follow? What must happen before I? Kojo Kwami Kwesi Ose. What must happen, Oko? What must happen before I will follow? Reminds me of Branham. When his wife was dying, he got to his wife's bedside. He didn't want to preach, although he had a great gift. There are many people with great gifts who don't want to serve the Lord. The gift doesn't mean you will obey God. You may have a great gift, but you die with it. You may have a great gift, but you go to your grave with it. He didn't want to. And then his wife died. And after that, he decided that he was going to just obey the call of God on his life. So he followed the Lord after that experience. You can follow me afterwards. You can't follow me now. What is going to happen is going to happen. Then you follow me after. Peter said, oh, <laughs> Lord, I'm the time that is very determined. When I've decided to do something, nothing can actually disturb my determinations that I've made in my life. Look at verse 37. And Peter said unto him, Why cannot I follow thee now? Why? Why? Because you don't believe. <laughs> simple. Everybody says simple. simple. I will lay, look at Peter. I will lay down my life for thy sake. <laughs> Lord, I, I say I've determined that I'm going to obey you full all the way. All the ways, Lord. All the ways that you lead me, Lord. I'm coming there. <laughs> Notice the question. Let's study it. Jesus answered, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? <laughs> Will you obey me? Will you follow me? Okay, okay, Chiro. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The cock shall not crow. Cuckoo, cuckoo! The cock shall not crow three times. Or the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. You will be an orangu three times before you will license. You will go your own way three times before you will see the light. You will do your own thing three times. Then you hear coo -coo -coo -coo. Then you say, ah, I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm going to follow Jesus. You will be like the prodigal son and say, I'm going my way. Then you will hear the pig say, Then you say, Ah, I'm lost. I'm now going to follow Jesus. Let me go back. And that's how Jesus said, you cannot follow me now. No, I can't follow. Hey, you can't follow. I said, I can't follow. You can't follow me. I said, I can't follow. You can't follow. I can't follow. You can't follow. I said, you can't follow me now. I said, I'll follow you now. I'll die for you. Like the boy who said, I will go. And he went not. <laughs> Do you remember that story? <laughs> the father, he was having his vineyard. He came and called two of them. I said, go and work in my vineyard today. And one said, say, I go. And he went not. Another one said, I, I will not. And he went. I will follow you. I will work for God. I will do his will. <laughs> but he won't. Something must come through three times. And when you hear the sound, <laughs> or I don't know what animal you will see or hear before you know that you are lost. You better run back and obey God at the last minute and get your last minute reward before it is too late. Give the Lord a mighty clap and a mighty shout of him. Stand to your feet.
Are you glad that it's never too late to serve the Lord? Afterwards. Afterwards. Perhaps after your divorce, you will follow the Lord. I'm still preaching. Put on the tape. I'm still preaching. I said, perhaps. Perhaps after your boyfriend has thrown you away like a rubbish, your beautiful face. Your beautiful face. You thought nobody could ever throw you away. But perhaps after they thrown you and you pick up yourself and you pick up your clothes and your, your dresses and your panties from the floor and you put it on and you go out like a fool. Afterwards, then you lift up your hand and say, Lord, I've decided to. And then you hear the sound of go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. After you have struggled, searching for things that could not, like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. After you've gone through and you've not gotten the things you thought you would get after all these years of following after vanity and following after things that cannot be grasped then you wake up and say ah, I've been a fool Lord. Lord Lord I'm 48 years old Lord I'm 52 can I still work for you Lord is it too late you can still follow him afterwards it's possible it's possible after you've had children with different men when your child calls you and say, Mommy, Mommy, and you say, Yes, say, Mommy, where is Daddy? And you don't know what to say. You don't know what to say. You don't know. Some of you wouldn't know, you know, you know, you know where Daddy is, and some of you wouldn't know who Daddy is. You don't know who he is. Where? Where is my Daddy? When I went to school today, they were asking me. They were teasing me about my daddy. They were saying that I have not seen my daddy before. And I had to be breaking. And I had to be breaking. Say, when they say, when, when your child, your baby asks you, where is my daddy? You have to bow down and say, I don't know who your daddy is. I don't know if it's John. I don't know if it's Quincy. I don't know if it's George. I don't know if it's Michael. I don't know if it's Frederick. I can't remember. Who, who was it? Help us. God help us. Perhaps after that, after your child asks you, then you, you'll be able to say, huh, I want to follow. <laughs> after you've given birth to a son of a thousand fathers. Perhaps you, you need to have an accident and die, be in a coma. <sighs> Open one eye. Lord, I'll serve you. I'll serve you. I'll serve you. You wouldn't follow him before. But afterwards, Lord, if you lift me out of this place, I'll follow you. I'll follow you, Lord. I'll follow you. One man said to me in the hospital bed, I will serve him. He said to me, if he will raise me up, I'm prepared to serve him after this. I'm prepared to serve him. Listen, gently. Abraham said his wife told him. She opened her eyes. She saw him. She said, Bill. Bill. He said, you preached it. He talked about it. He said, it's more glorious than you can ever imagine. And she told him, never stop preaching. You can't imagine. Never stop. Because she saw heaven. And she came back. And she told him, you can't imagine. Never stop. And he followed the Lord after that. What will it take for you to follow the Lord? The great Peter, he was now down. He was now a betrayer. He said, I swear God, Allah, by everything. I, I don't know, I, I, I've never, me, you saw me with Jesus Christ. From where did you say you saw Jesus Christ with me? Your face like a monkey. Your face like a chimpanzee. Foolish man. Get out of my sight before I throw something at you. And he turned around. That's apostle. <laughs> great apostle. He had to come down. And everybody remembered when he stood up to preach and he was talking about commitment. And I said, <laughs> we are remembering those days. <laughs> Apostle Peter, we are remembering those days when they said, You are saying it's our commitment and about this, but have you forgotten your days that you were? It wasn't easy for you, you see. 
but afterwards he was prepared when they were crucifying see, history tells us that he said do not crucify me like this i can't be crucified the same way as my jesus crucify me upside down upside down oh yeah perhaps you have to fill your exam fill it again and fill it again until you come down say lord lord i went to school i thought i'll get it in school i fell lord i fell twice I fell three times. Now, Lord, all to thee, I surrender. There's a man here. Your heart is about to be broken. Broken. Broken heart. In the brokenness of your heart, you will say, Lord, Peter wept after he denied Christ. Some of you need to break away from your church. Go to the pigs. Go down, down, down. In the midst of the pigs. When you are sleeping, the pig will go. Move. We are, we are sleeping here today. Then you'll be there. And then the, the pig will just do the back. And, the, and then the thing will come on your face. Then you wake up and say, Ah! What is this? Ah! My father's boy's quarters is better than this place. Perhaps you need to survive some experiences and then you know that it's time to follow the Lord. Your marriage is so beautiful now. It's just like honeymoon. Some of you didn't have marital problems. You wouldn't serve God. So God is going to send you real marital problems big time it's going to shake your house your house will tremble your house will shake your, your world will crumble my God God is shaking you perhaps after the marital problem if you survive you will save him your house will tremble and shake some of you don't know. Oh yeah. Perhaps if God had opened your womb, you wouldn't have darkened the doorway of the church. So he has closed it. Now that he's closed it, you come to church. Oh Lord my God, if you can give me a child, I shall save you. Perhaps if the Lord had not closed it, you may have been some proud queen over around you. What did you say? These pastors are always raising money. They are just impudent. We are working very hard and they don't know what we are experiencing before. We are there, every day you come and say, give us 100,000, give 200,000, other things like that. It's not as easy as that like that. And then the way they talk to us as if we are little, little children. We are not little, little children. What do you mean? Afterwards. Afterwards. I said afterwards some of you need afterwards before you will know what God is I can teach you loyalty a ten hundred million times but some of you have to be in my position they have to criticize you they will take you apart and you'll be surprised they will take you into little pieces and talk about you until you can't recognize who they are talking about. You ask, is it me they were talking about? You are the one they are talking about. You are the one they said, say, me? Oh, no. It's not. Say, yeah, you are the one. They would drill you and they will take you apart and finish you and spread you out and pour cider and oil and vinegar and salt until your wounds are aflame. And you say, what a bad thing did I do? I was just serving the Lord. And then afterwards, you will understand what Bishop has been going through and when he talks about loyalty. And, and you sit there and say, Every day you are, every day you are saying loyalty, loyalty. What, what, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of in the church? Is there something you are doing that you are afraid of? That every day you are saying loyalty like that. <laughs> afterwards, you will understand what I'm talking about. When I sent Pastor Ishmael to Tema, they took him apart into pieces. Oh, yeah. He became almost a demon in Tema. He understood. 
Everybody hated him. All the churches, all the pastors. And afterwards, I believe that he has, his understanding is higher than a lot of people here. Afterwards, afterwards, you will understand a lot of things. We are preaching and then we say, when we are sleeping small, we are tired from work and we are sleeping small, then he's very, 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 very annoyed. I know we are this is from kindergarten. <laughs> Afterwards, God will raise you up and give you a small Bible study to speak to. And as you are speaking to them, you ask the person, Do you understand? Oh, is that, is that what? Huh? One day I sent one of my pastors somewhere. He went to talk to somebody in his house as he was sitting down. Just two people. <laughs> the man that he was talking to just. Uh, <laughs> then he, he held it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you, you were saying what? You were saying what? Then as he continued to. He was, he just, look, uh, uh, wake up. Uh, 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 what were you saying? He slept on him in the house. Afterwards, when I'm standing here and I'm preaching, you will understand what I'm talking about. Afterwards. I said, afterwards. Afterwards. Some of you, you see somebody getting divorced. You don't understand it. Your fire is coming. When the fire burns, you're supposed to say, <gasps> ah. You will become softer and cooler afterwards. Lift up your hand and ask God for mercy for the afterwards. That your afterwards will not be too much for you. Man, those sambara la la ba, rashande, presel, pradal, desembreke. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hola rabashka balara bossi balara babandor la babandari bakataya. Man, with our two hands lifted up, we are praying. Let everybody lift your two hands up high and pray and let your mind go through and over what we have heard tonight. Many things have been spoken tonight to our spirits. It's so clear. We cannot say we didn't hear. We cannot say how else must we be told. Makataka basa brada. Brondi kisebredi. Vembrodi kitanda. Rakata. Mahilo sibredi vindi. Kitando. Izibo uli banderiako. Halibata. Miandara laba shibandariana. Rakototoromo sibredi vindi. I want everybody to pray tonight. Every one of us here. Everyone, we are praying. Lift your two hands and let's pray to God. When you say, Lord, I dedicate my life to, to, to you, Lord. Mahakato, Rakata. I have been watching a video from the Makazi entitled Shema. This message and many more are available from DaguerreMillsVideos.org. So simply go to DaguerreMillsVideos.org and you will have access to the Tuesday messages, the conferences, conventions, Sunday messages. Everything we have been airing is available and many more. Now if you've been watching this episode and you would like to sow into the ministry of Bishop Daguerre Mills, you can do so. Simply go to DaguerreMills.org, select the text to give option if you are in the US the PayPal option if you are anywhere else in the world and if you are with us here in Ghana there are numbers going across your screen now simply select the network provider you choose and you will be able to sow and be blessed thank you for joining us for another episode from the Makazi remember all these videos are available from videos.org and you will be blessed